Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here to talk about feelings of abandonment. Sometimes we have issues with that, don't we? Things in the past that may have happened that we can't even remember. But somehow it leaves an indelible mark in our psyches, doesn't it? And we go through life being afraid that someone's going to leave us and someone's going to walk away from us and they're going to be turned off to us and, and somehow this relationship won't come to fruition or God himself isn't that crazy about us so he probably won't stick around long either. He'll do what everybody else has done. Maybe your parents or, or your relatives or your husband or your wife Whatever, it, it seems to feel like a perpetual cycle that you can't seem to break. And you get to the point where, you know, the Bible says, uh, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Well, we get sick with discouragement, depression, and we get heavy with it and become heavy laden. And that's why Jesus says, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Um, I just briefed it up real quick. But what we go through is those things leave scars that actually cripple our walk in life. And it, it hinders our ability and hampers our ability to navigate through the problems of life. So we kind of want to throw in the towel. We think of suicide. We think of all kinds of things. We even think of committing crimes just to, to make a point. And it's like we're crying out, will somebody hear me? Well, yeah, God hears you. You're not alone in this. You may feel like it, but you're not. There were times when I would sit in the car when I was a little girl because when my mother had a nervous breakdown, they they committed her to an asylum. And during that time, my father had come and gotten me out of the system and um, had found a place for me to stay where he would pay the senior citizens to take care of me. And this was a couple. And they took very good care of me. So I had a very stable home at the time. And during that time, when I would ride with him, you know, we don't realize how things affect us. I spent maybe a, eight months or six months in the in the orphanage, and I don't know what happened. But there were things like my father would say, why is it every time there's a loud noise, you jump and you put your hands up? And he would say, do you remember anybody hurting you? Well, I didn't. I was young, three or four years old. Well, then... The other issue I had, I don't know where it came from, was abandonment. And if my father parked me in the car and walked into a store real quick to come back, my mind would play games. What if he never comes back? What if he leaves and he goes somewhere and I'm all by myself and I don't have anybody? And all of a sudden these fears would start wellowing up in me. Well, we go through life like that. He never abandoned me. He was a wonderful father. But that didn't stop my fears. And sometimes, even though you have a wonderful God looking after you, working things out for you, for some reason, you can't seem to stop considering the fact or entertaining the thought, but what if God gets tired of me like everybody else did? And what if God... Uh, doesn't like me anymore and walks away. That's not his M.O. The, the, uh, what do they call that? The modus operandi? That's not his M.O., you guys. God is a very present help in trouble. God knows when you're going to start hurting before the hurt has even begun. He's already maneuvering and working things out for you. So don't lose heart. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I have such a burden. I've been, I've been feeling it. Even when I finished the other tape, I just broke down crying 
and I don't know who this is for, but one of you, somebody, I'm looking at you, and you're sitting there saying, baby, you're talking to me, and I don't know what to do with this. You go to God. You pour your heart out to him. Do you hear me? You open that Bible. It may be a little dusty. It may not. But you open that Bible. And instead of deciding what you're going to wear or what you're going to read, oh, <laughs> ask God to tell you what he wants you to read. Because there are times when he will talk right to your pain through that word. He does it to me all the time. You have got to get a grip because let me tell you, these are the last days. And Satan's strategy, of course, we know is to steal, kill, and destroy us. So we have to we have to fight back. We can't just lay down and let our lives be raped. Let our our hope be sodomized. Let our our uh our life be beaten out of us. We can't just lay down and take that. You're too valuable. So you have to go to the one who has the strength to fight for you. And when you can't lift your own head, God is a lifter up of our heads. He will dry your weeping eyes. But first you must weep and pour your heart out. Don't hold that stuff in. It needs to come out now. You need to be healed now. You can be going through healing, restoration, encouragement, all of that. At the same time that you're going through a trial. That's what's so beautiful about God. You are never alone. Even when he is silent, you are are never alone. You know, when I went through the phase of my ex-husband, my that was husband number one, and he had an addiction to pornography. And I went through eight years of being a victim of his adultery. But he was a victim too, because God showed me there was some stuff going on that he didn't know how to work through and he didn't know how to go to God. He would see me do it, but for some reason he didn't believe it for himself. I don't know what was going on. He was saved, but he was on the edge because he just had this 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 emotional block and it caused all kind of freaky behavior. But anyway, be that as it may, what I'm really trying to say to you is while I was going through the most painful period, which was the first three years of our marriage. His adultery started the second month. Yeah. During those first three years, me hurting and eating myself into a good year blimp, what ended up happening was when I got to the point where I finally said, Lord, and I gestured, here is him. I won't say his name. I'll just say here is Boogeyman. Okay, here is my jealousy. Here are my feelings of betrayal. Here is my hurt. You take it, Lord. I can't handle this. Here is the weight it puts on me, physically and emotionally. I can't carry it any longer. Take it all. Take it all. I give it to you. Please, Lord. Help me restore my restore the joy of my salvation. Very next day, you guys, I woke up and I never looked back. I never cried another tear about it. I never felt another bit of pain. All pain was gone. The problem never went away. A matter of fact, he graduated to having an outer, an extramarital affair. And the young girl would call. <laughs> I 
I had no pain. It was as if I was living with my brother. I had filed for the divorce and uh, it was simple, sweet, cut and clean. And I never looked back. I never mourned it. I never had remorse. I never, I mean, God just totally took my emotions and pulled them out of me and said, you'll never feel that again. And I didn't. Now, I say that to say the one thing that I got from it, because God is always working things into you as he's working things out of you and he's working things out for you. The one thing I got out of that was learning. I didn't even learn. It just developed as I went, kept going to God and reading his word. I, 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 I don't know how to say, but a, a love, the supernatural love that God put in my heart just grew and grew and grew. And I could hug, listen to this, I could hug my ex-husband to comfort him because of the heavy condemnation on his face and pray for him and everything. And I felt nothing but love for him. Only God. And when God said the marriage is over and I'm no longer keeping you in this, I'm done with you. You've gotten yours. You're, you've gotten the good that I have out of this. I still got to work on him, but I'm done with you now. Your class is done with. The love went away. It just disappeared just like that. And what ended up happening? I filed for the divorce and it was over. Sweet, simple, done. So I say that to you to say, life brings challenges. Life brings quandaries. And we're saying, why me? What is the point? Oh, there's a point because you will never know you as much as God knows you. And I'm telling you, I learned that firsthand. God knows what you need. God knows what you need squeezed out of you and pressure squeezes stuff out. You just put a little pressure on a tube of toothpaste and you see what comes out. Same thing with us. Life brings pressure. And what comes out is what God skims off, tosses into the sea of forgetfulness, steadily cleaning us up and cleaning us out. And working in inner healing and a strengthening, and he's steadily imparting more and more of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, all these problems that, that we go through, there is a lot of good in them, even though they hurt so bad. Just like a muscle man is lifting all these weights. And he suffers a lot of pain to get to that point. Winners sacrifice a lot to win. And so must you and so must I. We can't quit. Don't you dare quit. You have no idea what's on the other side of that victory. Let God pull you through. You hang with him. Amen.